Hey ho folks, welcome back to Straightforward Farming. Uh, we've been chisel plowing for the last, I don't know, six or seven days or so. Finally got that wrapped up this morning. So now we're gonna switch over and put a little anhydrous on. We got a chance of rain uh, starting tomorrow evening, I think it is. Um, doesn't sound like it's gonna amount to much. We might get a half inch or so. But uh, we really don't need any, to be quite honest with you. So I'm gonna try to get a little anhydrous put on maybe tomorrow. I got some bean stubble that we did not chisel or do anything to. So I would like to get that on before it rains, hopefully. So we'll get the bar hooked up here. This is a 17 knife. Uh, it's a Case IH, DMI, whatever you wanna call it. 17 knife bar, so that'd be 42 and a half foot wide. <clears throat> gonna be pulling it with the 9230. It's uh, 325 horse, basically, which, uh, it won't have any trouble in the ground that's been chisel plowed. Uh, the ground that hasn't been chiseled, it probably still shouldn't affect it all that much. Um, normally I pull a 15 knife uh, just because then when I get one, I can put it either on the big tractor or a front wheel assist if need be. Um, all they had available was a 17, which it won't be no issue at all. I pulled a 17 in the past and there's no problem there. So let's get her hooked up and see if we can get a little gas put on. So this tool bar run off of a Raven monitor. I don't have the monitor in here yet. I think they just dropped the bar off here last night. Uh, nobody was around and I don't think they could get in the shop to leave the monitor and whatnot. So I just gotta slap it in real quick. As soon as I get it, I'm gonna call them and it'll be ready to go. So anhydrous ammonia is a form of nitrogen that we use on ground that will be planted to corn next year. Anhydrous, you can put it on in the fall or next spring, either one. And we do it both ways, it just depends on the year. So we'll be hooking up some big white, they look like a propane tank. You'll hook them up behind this. That's got the anhydrous in it and it'll knife it in the ground as you go through the field. So you got these rubber hoses here. And you got a metal tube on your knife and then it'll come out right down here. Them are called mole knives, they'll run Oh that deep or roughly you know you can kind of see where they're rusted so i mean they're going to go in the ground eight or ten inches maybe 12 whatever it is these are called your sealers that's going to pile dirt right up over that slot as you go through the field now anhydrous is a very very uh what's the right word i want to use not not toxic but um you don't want to breathe it in um i mean it's one of them things that if you would happen to get stuck in a cloud of that, I mean, it can take you down like that. It's a very unique smell. If you ever smell it, you won't forget it. Um, it don't bother me all that much anymore. I've done enough of it, and years ago when I used to work at the co-op and put it on uh, custom, I breathed in a lot of this stuff over the years, and I mean, it, it still ain't pleasant, but it don't bother me like it does some people. So, yeah, it's one of them things you really gotta watch. If you ever have a problem, hose break, whatever, a big leak, you get that some bitch turned so you're upwind and the anhydrous will go you know behind you because there's been times i've had you know you'll raise it up on the end of the field and you'll get a little bit of a poof come out every time you raise it up and uh, there's been times i've had a shear bolt break or something so stop and not really be paying attention it's kind of a calm day walk around here and you'll get everything fixed and get back in the tractor and your whole cab got full of that stuff it sucked it in through the air conditioner and boy it'll it'll make your eyes water and i mean it, it can be pretty nasty so you always gotta, gotta respect it when you're working with it. Well, I found the Raven monitor. They put it in the back part of the shed, not the shop. So this will be the monitor we run. Gotta get it all wired in, which it's all quick connect, so it, it really ain't that big of a job anyway. So we'll get her slapped in here. I'll show you how it works. Well, I got the monitor all installed and got everything done and right there at the very end all i had to do was plug a wire in or a big kind of a harness into the monitor and from there into the tractor and that's what gives it power so it'll turn on and uh, our supplier retailer had forgot to throw that 
little pigtail in the box, so I don't have a power cord for it, which ain't no big deal. We ain't gonna run it today anyway, so he yeah, act like they drop by, drop one by this evening or something. So no big deal there. And then we talked on the phone too, and I think actually we're gonna hold off on putting some anhydrous on uh, for a couple days. It's been unseasonably warm here, like 20 degrees above normal. I mean, we're in the 70s, mid 70s here for daytime temps. And even nighttime temps are still in the 60s, which is kind of unheard of for this time of year. So uh, we kind of want the ground to be a little bit cooler. This nitrogen or anhydrous, it can leach out, we're gonna call it, um, which we'll put this in layman's terms. It's, it doesn't actually evaporate, but that's just what we're gonna call it. It can actually move and leach out into the air and then it's not there anymore. So we've decided we're gonna let this front come through. It's supposed to come a shower of rain tomorrow evening and then really start cooling off. So we thought, Let's let this front come through, bring these temps down a little bit, and then we'll put the anhydrous on. And we're actually going to run InServe. It's a stabilizer. Um, it's kind of hit and miss. We've ran it in the past some. There's years we haven't. Uh, you talk to the neighbors, and it's it's just hit and miss. And this InServe is a stabilizer that helps that nitrogen stay more or less bonded to the soil so it doesn't leach out and go up into the air for your know, whatever you want to call that. So... Uh, so yeah, I think we're gonna let it get a little cooler, run in, serve with it, and I think we'll be okay then. That's the plan as of now, but that changes by the minute. So finally time to put a little anhydrous on. Had uh, two, three tenths of rain there night before last. So that kind of slowed things down a little bit. Um, you'll see when we get to the field, it looks wet on top, but it's not. I mean, it's dry underneath, so everything should be good to go. So we'll get a tank hooked up here and get ready to roll. First tank of the season, so it's gonna take me a little bit to get my distance right. I'll probably have to get back up in here and either pull the tractor forward or back it up a little bit. They've got extendable hitches on the back of the bar, but it'd be a miracle if I hit it right first time out the gate. Oh, look at that. It's gonna be close. Another half inch and I wouldn't have made it. All right, now we got to hook our hoses up. So we got one hose feeds that half of the bar. That hose feeds that half of the bar. So we'll put one here and one here. Next, we gotta turn the valves on. Then you always wanna make sure your bleeder valve is closed. That'll start oozing anhydrous out otherwise. You crack them open. When you're going to change tanks, you shut all your valves, and you crack that, and that'll bleed all the anhydrous out, so when you unscrew that, it don't make a big poof of nastiness. Okay, so them's open. Now we're gonna go up here on the tank and open them. I always open everything kind of slow in case there's a leak somewhere or whatever. You'll probably see these hoses start jumping on this toolbar when I start turning this because it's, it's completely dead. It ain't been used this year, so it's gonna start priming itself up. Oh, actually, wait, I forgot. There's two valves right there I gotta open. So let me open these here. Okay, things to watch for. This is your gauge tells you how much is in it. It's just like a propane tank. 85% is considered full. So this tank is full. 
And then this pressure gauge right here, now that the weather's cooling off, this tank pressure will start dropping, so you're not gonna be able to go as fast. If it was a hot, sunny day and 70 degrees, that might be up closer to 100 pounds. But we're a little over 50, that'll be sufficient. That one's full, good pressure. Yeah, in the fall like this, you always wanna watch that tank pressure, because like last night, it got down to like 25, 26 degrees here. So that tank pressure really drops and then this stuff won't flow as good. So you gotta be careful. You gotta watch your speed. Sometimes you can park them in a heated shop overnight or whatever and get the tank pressure up and you'll be fine. But where we're at here, that's not gonna cause any problems. We'll be fine. All right, we'll open these now. Usually those, those are always left open, it seems like. And all you gotta do is these here, but we'll see what happens. See no leaks. So that half's good. Let's see what this half does. Here, I can actually show you what this stuff's like. You crack one of these, hear that hissing? When we get these tanks ran off, I'll show you. That'll actually spit a little anhydrous out once this is all primed up and ready to go. So you always wanna be careful, you know, wear your gloves and your goggles. As you can see, I've got all the personal protective equipment on. And before everybody freaks out and tells me how I'm doing it wrong, just so we're on the same page here, I put on thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of anhydrous. I used to do it custom. I'm not saying that's right that I don't you know, shouldn't have to wear gloves or goggles or whatever, but I'm just saying this ain't my first rodeo. I know what I'm doing. Well, we finally got everything tweaked and going here. Things are going pretty good. Rolling along about uh, seven and a half, eight mile an hour. Just kind of depends on where I'm at in the field. So it goes pretty quick. That equates to uh, like 37 acres an hour, roughly, something like that. So it goes on pretty quick. I always like putting anhydrous on. It don't seem like you're in one spot forever. Had a hose come off back here on the toolbar. We have to put her on. Everything's all iced up. See this? See? She's iced up. Which doesn't hurt anything, that's normal. I'm just showing that for the people who've never worked around anhydrous. So yeah, this hose here come off. It goes down here on this knife. I'll have to get a piece of wire and clean that knife out, make sure there ain't no dirt in it, but. See, everything's froze. See all that ice coming off of there? Sometimes you gotta give them a minute to get warm back up so you can work with them. But there's froze solid. There. So that's all it is. Just a hose clamp and a hose sticking to that tube. Got one on every row. But yeah, I'd have to look at Mr. Google. I forget if anhydrous is, I want to say is it like 282 degrees below zero or something. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy cold. So it's actually boiling when you see it, like when I raise it up on the end, you see all that, you know, smoke, you want to, I mean, it ain't smoke, but that's what everybody calls it, but that big white poof, that's actually the anhydrous boiling and turning itself into a vapor. This Raven monitor here is how I turn the anhydrous on and off right here. So this is how you unhook a tank.
much to it. Okay, now we want to make sure this bar is primed up. There we go. So we had a pretty good day yesterday putting anhydrous on for not getting started till noon. Uh, got roughly 250 acres put on yesterday. I'd have to go tally it up, but pretty good jag. So um, with a little luck, don't have any trouble, we should get done sometime tonight. They're saying we're gonna probably be waking up to rain in the morning. It could be anywhere from a half inch to an inch. And I would say if we end up getting closer to an inch, then I'd say that's gonna be the end of the season for everybody around here. It's not overly dry. I mean, it's not wet, but it, we dang sure don't need any rain. So if we go get an inch, and that'll probably be the end of it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, no trouble, we'll be done tonight. You ever have one of them days where nothing seems to go right? That's how it's going today. And it ain't been nothing major. It's just been little piddly stuff here and there. Just got moved 16 miles from home, pulled in the field, and broke a shank. So it's laying over there in the field, so I gotta go pick it up. And we're gonna have to get a new one put on. So gotta transfer all the old stuff off of one and put her on the new one. So I pulled in the field right there, went to right, there and broke the shank. Breaking a shank, I mean, it's not a humongous deal. I just got to wait on somebody to bring me one. I called the supplier and they got somebody on their way, so. We'll see if we can get her fixed. Well, we got the shank fixed and we are back up and rolling. It took about 45 minutes time the guy got here and got it fixed and all that good stuff. So we are rolling again.
tell you what, I hate conditions like this. With all this dirt, you just can't see anything on that toolbar. You break a shear bolt on a knife or something. Here just a minute ago, I broke another shank. Pissed me off. But hell, I didn't even know I broke it until I'd went a full round and come back and seen it laying on the end. I mean, hell, you can't see the, you know, the white smoke, you'll call it, from the anhydrous in conditions like this behind you. So, I didn't film fixing it because I was too cold. It's freezing cold outside. So, yeah, these ain't the best conditions. But, it sounds like it's going to be raining first thing in the morning. we got about 50 acres left, and I'm going to get it done come hell or high water. Well, we was able to get done with anhydrous last night, so two hard days wrapped us up. Uh, it's raining this morning, just like they said it was probably going to be, so I'm glad we got done. All we got left is uh, just a little bit down in the river bottom, 29 acres, but it won't go on till spring because it can flood down there. So we got her all done. So that's going to wrap up this week's episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.